On December 4th, 2018, Epic announced they will be launching their own store, pitching their revenue sharing terms as a first for the industry. Game makers receive 88% of the revenue from sales on the Epic Game Store, which Epic is at pains to point out is a significant increase over the 70% they receive from sales on Steam. Furthermore, developers are not restricted to using Epic's Unreal Engine. But if they do, their 5% royalty will be waived, instead being incorporated into the 12% Epic already receives as its share of all sales on its store. We can see why developers would want to take this offer. But what's in it for us, the consumers? What benefit do we derive from Epic Store, or any other store for that matter? Over the last decade, the gaming industry has seen AAA publishers launch their own distribution platforms. Rockstar's Social Club, EA's Origin, Ubisoft's Uplay, Battle.net, which is now the Blizzard launcher, and more recently, Bethesda.net. This proliferation of launches has brought both benefits and drawbacks for players. GOG.com is perhaps the most pro-consumer store on the market, making games available without any DRM, in stark contrast to every other platform out there. Single-player games purchased on GOG.com don't need its launcher, Galaxy, to launch or play, even though Galaxy does make it easier to download and install the games you've bought. On the other hand, single-player games bought on Steam will require you to be logged into Steam if you want to play. This does not apply if the game files do not use any DRM, though this will disable multiplayer for games that rely on Steamworks. Even so, these games are the exceptions that prove the rule. If you're in the market for a particular game that is available on both GOG and Steam, GOG is always the better choice, unless it's cheaper on Steam. Multiplayer games are an exception to this rule. There is a larger community on Steam than on GOG, meaning you might find it easier to get into a match if you buy the game on Steam. Additionally, a few games on GOG require logging into the Galaxy Launcher for multiplayer functionality, which doesn't seem to conform to GOG's motto. However, they do offer another service that might make up for it. GOG Connect. If you have an eligible game on Steam, Connect allows you to link your Steam account to your GOG account and then claim your games on the GOG store. Doing so lets you obtain a DRM-free copy from GOG while retaining your original copy on Steam. The only caveat to this is that only a few games are eligible to claim this way, and even then only for a short time. If you fail to connect your accounts and claim your games in time, you are out of luck. However, if you do manage to complete the process, you will not lose access to the games you've collected, even if your Steam account is compromised. Unfortunately, other publishers take the exact opposite approach. If you buy a Ubisoft or Rockstar game on Steam, you are required to connect your Steam account to Uplay or Rockstar Social Club. Furthermore, you have to be logged into both platforms when playing the game. In Ubisoft's case, you won't even be able to download the game from Uplay. If you click the download button in Uplay, it triggers the download process in Steam. If you lose access to either account, you will be unable to use the product you have paid for. Even if you are logged into the Uplay account that has the license for Rainbow Six Siege, you will be locked out of the game if you don't have access to the Steam account you bought the game on. Why? If Ubisoft is going to insist we use Uplay for their games, why do they continue to sell their games on Steam? All this does is mislead people into purchasing a substantially inferior product. If you buy a Ubisoft title on Steam, you shackle yourself to two restrictions. There are two ways you could lose access to your game. Had you bought the title on Uplay, that number would have been only one. There is no benefit to purchasing Ubisoft titles on Steam, unless there's a discount that's not also available on Uplay. Ubisoft should just make a clean break with Steam as EA did with Origin back in 2011. To be fair, they did break up with Steam, only to rebound with Epic. In early January, The Division 2 was quietly taken off Steam. Instead, you can now pre-order it on the Epic Game Store. Please don't. While Ubisoft transitioned from Steam to Epic, they have not relaxed their cross-launcher restrictions whatsoever. If you buy The Division 2 on the Epic Store, you will be required to connect your Epic account to Uplay. If you want to play The Division 2, please don't buy it on Epic. While Ubisoft may, as of this video, be the only publisher to require Epic's account to be linked to their own platform, they are certainly not the only company that have ditched Steam for Epic recently. 
In what has quickly become a contentious issue for the PC community, several companies have announced their games will be available exclusively on the Epic Game Store. Let's analyse these in chronological order. The Epic Game Store went live on the 7th of December 2018. Within hours of this launch, five games were announced to be exclusively available on the Epic Store. Let's begin with Satisfactory. Here's what the publisher had to say. Hey everyone, it's Chase from Coffee Stain Studios here and I'm just making a quick update video on something that a lot of people have noticed. Our Steam Store page is gone. Uh, yeah, we removed it um, and Satisfactory is now going to be on uh, Epic Games Store as an exclusive title. Uh, so that's the only place you'll be able to get it. And um, I know a lot of people are going to have strong opinions about that. Uh, cool. Uh, have those opinions. On the same day, Team 17 announced that their game Genesis Alpha 1 would also be exclusive to Epic for a year, following which the game would launch on Steam in January 2020. Simultaneously, World War Z was announced to be heading for the Epic Game Store, with its website removing the Steam logo and replacing it with a generic PC logo. The same day, developer Double Damage announced their game Rebel Galaxy Outlaw would be exclusive to Epic for 12 months. Why would they do this? the 88% split they get to keep. That's another whole strata of developers who can survive. Would we like that to become the new standard? Yes. Can that be done without leverage? No. Is some form of exclusive content required to get the momentum to make that happen? Yes. And we're willing to get on board to make that happen. The only way this gets any traction is with some exclusive content and we're willing to be one of those canaries in the mineshaft. Jace Varley, Community Manager for Satisfactory, also echoed these sentiments. Uh, another thing is the revenue share. Obviously, it is better than other places. Um, and what we would like to be a part of is trying to set that as a new standard uh, for the industry, which would be super cool. Varley was more forthcoming in his subsequent video and presented another reason for their exclusivity agreement. Uh, another thing is we like that it is an option, uh, like another option, which then only focuses on giving sort of quality curated uh, titles. How does this benefit consumers exactly? Gamers have access to search functions and are perfectly able to find quality games on their own. They don't need quality curated titles shoved in their face front and center. Varley wasn't alone in his enthusiasm for curation. Rebel Galaxy Outlaw also echoed these sentiments. From our standpoint as customers, a curated store with a more limited selection of quality games is a plus. It doesn't look all that curated though. Looks like Epic will take any game they can. And that's an understatement. They are literally paying publishers to use their store, if we are to believe Jace Varley of Coffee Stain. And we have no reason not to. Yeah, we got cash money. Uh, <laughs> we got payment for the exclusivity deal. On December 20th, 2018, Skybound Games, the studio that had acquired the rights to Telltale's unfinished Walking Dead series announced that the remaining episodes of its final season will be exclusive to the Epic Store. Players who had previously purchased the season on Steam or GOG would still receive their content through the original point of purchase. But for everyone else, Epic is the only store that will sell it going forward. As to why, Skybound CEO released this statement. Epic stepped up to the plate immediately to work with us in order to bring the original team back together and ensure fans will receive the completed season of Tell Tales The Walking Dead, the final season. One week later, Epic's chief executive Tim Sweeney, the same Tim Sweeney who complained about Microsoft creating a walled garden with UWP and the Windows 10 store, shed some light on the nature of support Epic offers developers in exchange for exclusivity. These exclusives don't come to stores for free. They are a result of some combination of marketing commitments, development funding and revenue guarantees. If you're not familiar with what revenue guarantees are, let PC Gamer clue you in. Revenue guarantees simply mean Epic will promise that a game sold on its store will generate a certain amount of income for a developer. If the game fails to meet that threshold, Epic will find a way to make up the difference. It's clear why developers are attracted to Epic's generous terms. But that's only half the equation. What is Epic offering consumers? When they first announced the launch of their store, Epic sweetened the pot for players by offering one free game every two weeks. Giveaways are always welcome, though this is not exactly a new strategy in the industry. 
We've seen this before with Ubisoft's 30 year anniversary giveaway and EA's On The House, though both of these programs have been discontinued as of this video. Point is, this is a reasonable way to introduce players to your distribution platforms in a manner that will make them want to use it. Sadly, Epic decided this was insufficient going by their aggressive push to incorporate as many games as they can into their exclusivity arrangement. We'll leave you to decide whether the free games make up for this. Leave your thoughts in the comments section below. In his statement on Reddit, Sweeney was eager to declare another benefit the Epic Game Store brings to consumers. When lots of stores compete, the result is a combination of better prices for you. How exactly will stores compete when the game is exclusive to the Epic Game Store? Then again, what do we know? We're just a couple of YouTubers. We are not qualified to comment on how companies decide to price their products. We can, however, compare prices between Epic and Steam to ascertain if competition between the two stores has resulted in better prices for consumers. This comparison will analyze all games common to both stores. Let's start with Subnautica, a game that Epic gave away for free back in December 2018. The new Below Zero Early Access costs $19.99 on both Epic and Steam, while the base game is on sale for $17.49 on both platforms, down from an original price of $24.99, which is also identical between the two stores. Some might speculate that publishers are contractually forbidden from making the game cheaper outside Steam. Surely this would cease to be a factor when the game is taken off Steam. The Walking Dead final season was available for pre-order in June 2018, with a price of $19.99. PC players pre-ordering on Steam, GOG, Gamergate or Humble Bumble would receive a 10% discount. This offer would expire upon the game's release. The final season was taken off Steam and GOG when Telltale went under. Skybound acquired the rights and resumed development of the remaining episodes, and then made the season available exclusively on the Epic Game Store. Did this result in a price drop? No. The Walking Dead's final season still costs $19.99, even after its migration to the Epic Store. This is the same case with The Division 2, which still costs $59.99 on both Uplay and the Epic Game Store. Identical prices are a recurring theme in our comparison. My time at Portia is $29.99 on both Steam and the Epic Store. Donut County costs $12.99 on both stores. Hello Neighbor is $29.99 on both Steam and the Epic Store. Darksiders 3 costs $59.99 on both stores. Though if you are interested in this game, I highly recommend you go for the GOG version. Goragoa costs $14.99 on both stores. What Remains of Edith Finch cost $19.99 on both stores, though Epic did give this game away for free in January, as was the case with Super Meat Boy, which has since reverted to costing $14.99 on both Steam and the Epic Store. Tim Sweeney's promise of better prices doesn't exactly hold up to scrutiny. There is only one case that supports his claim, Metro Exodus, which had its price cut by $10 in the transition from Steam to the Epic Game Store. This did little to calm angry consumers who felt they had been deceived by Metro's publisher, Deep Silver. Why did they feel this way? To answer this, we need to retrace the evolution of Metro Exodus's availability back to its earliest days on Steam. On the 15th of August 2018, Metro Exodus was made available to pre-purchase on Steam. Buyers could choose between two editions, the regular costing the standard $59.99, while the gold edition was pegged at $84.99. So far, so good. On December 13, 2018, the Metro Exodus Twitter account announced the game had gone gold, meaning discs were now being produced to prepare for release. This announcement came six days after Epic launched their store. By this time, players were aware of several titles that were now exclusive to Epic. The NDA for disclosing exclusivity had been lifted on the 7th, same day as the launch of the Epic store. If Metro Exodus had to be an Epic exclusive, now would have been the time to announce it. Unless, of course, the game wasn't an Epic exclusive at the time. This doesn't appear to be the case, as Metro Exodus Twitter account announced in the last week of January 2019 that physical copies would now arrive with an Epic key. Is the publisher now scrambling to replace the Steam keys in the package boxes with Epic keys? Or were they Epic keys all along? Did the game go gold with Epic keys? Let us know what you think in the comments section below. On January 28, 2019, 
Deep Silver announced Metro Exodus would now be exclusive to the Epic Games Store, though players who pre-purchased the game on Steam would still receive their content through Steam. This sparked an uproar in the PC community as many consumers felt they had been misled into purchasing a product they would not have bought if they were informed of this arrangement. The controversy grew so overwhelming that it even affected companies tangentially associated with the publisher. One such company, THQ Nordic GmbH, felt compelled to put out a statement, distancing themselves from the firestorm just one day after the exclusivity deal was announced. The decision to publish Metro Exodus as a timed Epic Store exclusive was made entirely on Koch Media's side as Metro is their intellectual property. They are a sister company of THQ Nordic Vienna, which is the reason why we can and will not comment on this matter. We do not want to categorically exclude the possibility of timed exclusives for any of our games in the future. But speaking in the here and now, we definitely want to have the players choose the platform of their liking and make our portfolio available to as many outlets as possible. 24 hours after this, the CEO of THQ Nordic GmbH's parent company, THQ Nordic AB, released this statement. I fully support our subgroup's autonomy to run their respective businesses. I believe it's in the group's and ultimately the consumer's best interest that business decisions are made close to the market, and this is the group's consistent business model. I firmly believe that Deep Silver and Koch Media have carefully considered the advantages and disadvantages, opportunities and risks in their decision to go solely with Epic Games Store. The decision has my full support. If you're confused between the two THQ Nordics, here is how they work. THQ Nordic AB is the parent company that owns three publishers. The publisher and distributor, Koch Media, including their publishing label, Deep Silver, which owns Metro, Dead Island, Saints Row and more. The publisher, THQ Nordic GmbH, that owns Darksiders, Titan Quest, Wreckfest, among others. No epic exclusives as of this video. Coffee Stain, the developer and publisher of Satisfactory, another epic exclusive we looked at earlier. To recap, Deep Silver's exclusivity deal with Epic has the full support of their parent company, and they are willing to ride out the controversy, no matter how angry consumers get. Are players justified in their outrage, though? While Deep Silver promised Steam pre-orders would still be honoured, they disclosed physical copies would now arrive with an Epic key. This contradicts their promotional material for the Spartans Collector's Edition, which clearly shows a Steam logo right next to the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. It's not hard to see where the accusations of bait and switch are coming from. Players who bought the Collector's Edition only had until the 31st of January 2019 to claim a refund. That's three days between the announcement of Epic exclusivity and the deadline for a refund. Any buyer who wasn't tuned into the news at the time will now be stuck with a product that's different from what they paid for. Will these buyers of physical copies receive any compensation for this change in service? Will they receive any benefit from that $10 price cut? So far, this doesn't seem likely. At least, nothing has been announced to this effect. This has led to many accusing Deep Silver of false advertising. Do these accusations hold any water? The question of guilt hinges on when the exclusivity deal was made. Were the trailers hinting of a Steam release made before or after Deep Silver had struck an exclusivity agreement with Epic? Did Deep Silver make the trailers knowing the game wouldn't be coming to Steam in 2019 as the trailers promised? The most recent trailer to use a Steam logo was released on January 22, 2019, just six days before the game was announced to be an Epic exclusive. When did Deep Silver not announce but agree to make the game exclusive on Epic's platform? In the first week of February, Spiel Times interviewed 4A Games and put this question to the studio. This is what they learned. It was after E3 2018 when 4A Games was informed about the Epic Games Store exclusivity. Metro Exodus was still a game for Steam in terms of development before that time. For context, E3 2018 was June 12th. However, the developer was vague and did not specify how long after E3 2018 they were informed, and this length of time could make all the difference. Sadly, we aren't privy to these internal details. That being said, clues may be found in Deep Silver's sister company, Coffee Stain. We have already analysed this publisher earlier in the video. To recap, they announced their game Satisfactory was now an epic exclusive immediately upon the launch of the store. 
were Epic simultaneously in contact with sister publisher Deep Silver to convince them to make Metro Exodus an Epic exclusive. Obviously, Epic would want to cast their net as wide as they can. Was this when the exclusivity deal for Metro Exodus was struck? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. There is one party in this debacle that we haven't talked about yet. The studio developing Metro Exodus 4A Games. What do the people making the game think of the controversy surrounding its release? This is a comment written by a developer working at 4A Games. The original comment is in Russian. On the bottom is the comment after it was run through Google Translate. I watched the bubbling. Impressions are twofold. On the one hand, the withdrawal from Steam is ambiguous, so no one has done so sharply, as far as I can tell. This is news which could cause rejection. Yes, and such a move pulls the need to install an epic launcher, which could cause some inconvenience to the players, and therefore cause discontent. On the other hand, the reaction of a certain category of players, only torrents and all that, is hardly adequate. It seems that people did not want to play, just waited for a reason to pour out their bile. That is, it turns out that we, the developers, for years have been hard and painful, with losses trying to do something special. But a certain category of players believes that our work is not worth even a couple of minutes to install the launcher. Naturally, it is their life and their right. But then what do they care about the Metro? Obviously, it is not interesting to them. I can only say that they were not our players either. They are not interested in our work. Which means that, for example, the opinion of such people is not interesting for me either. What is the point for me personally, and not only, to listen to their opinion? But, consider the situation deeper. Someone says that they say they crap Exodus and the previous games in the series. It will make the world better. They will put greedy developers in their place. To this I can answer that in a pinch. If at all, all the PC players announce a boycott of the Metro, then the next Metro, if it does, is definitely not on the PC. Better or worse, decide for yourself. I wouldn't be so sure about that. Even if Metro Exodus sells fewer copies than expected, I'm sure their deal with Epic has them covered. Don't take my word for it. This is what Epic CEO Tim Sweeney had to say. These exclusives don't come to stores for free. They're a result of some combination of marketing commitments, development funding, or revenue guarantees. Here's a reminder of what revenue guarantees are. Revenue guarantees simply mean Epic will promise that a game sold in a store will generate a certain amount of income for the developer. If the game fails to meet that threshold, Epic will find a way to make up the difference. Furthermore, I am not worried about the Metro franchise's future on the PC platform, as I am certain Epic will pay a fortune to get another Metro exclusive for their store. Even if Exodus does sell poorly, the blame lies not on the consumers, but on the publisher. It is quite disgusting to see a developer try to guilt consumers into supporting their publisher's awful practices. The day after we wrote this, the Metro Exodus Twitter account released a statement distancing the studio from the lone developer's remarks confirming our confidence in the series' future on the PC platform. The recent decision to move Metro Exodus from Steam to the Epic Game Store was made by Koch Media Deep Silver alone. The recent comments made by a member of the 4A Games development team do not reflect Deep Silver's or 4A Games' view on the future of the franchise. They do reflect the hurt and disappointment of a passionate individual who has seen what was previously nothing but positive goodwill towards his work turn into controversy due to a business decision he had no control over. We respectfully ask that any and all valid feedback over this decision is directed at Koch Media Deep Silver and not the developers at 4A Games. The future release strategy of the Metro series lies with Koch Media Deep Silver. Our decision to partner with Epic Games was based on the goal of investing in the future of the series and our development partner at 4A Games. We have every intention of continuing the franchise and a PC version will always be at the heart of our plans. Deep Silver waited until the last second to announce Exodus's exclusivity. They were happy to let Steam market and raise awareness for their game in the meanwhile. We won't be surprised if Valve introduces new terms for publishers that forbid them from withdrawing their games from the Steam store once they've put them up for sale. That being said, Exodus is coming to Steam in 2020, one year after the date originally announced in the trailers. This 12-month term seems to be the common theme among Epic exclusives. 
Is it a timed exclusive deal? Yeah, it's actually a timed exclusive deal. It is 12 months long, and then after that, we can put the game wherever we want. While this is certainly better than the game never coming to other stores, this arrangement still has potential to backfire. Indeed, a hotly anticipated single-player title is the worst hostage to force players to your store. While Epic can certainly pay to stall the Steam release for a whole year, they cannot pay to stall the release of a crack. Admittedly, Deep Silver is already paying another company for that, Denuvo. However, the window of protection Denuvo provides is fast shrinking and cannot hope to spend a whole year. It is almost certain that the game will be cracked long before it's made available on Steam. Ironically, pirates may get to play Exodus months before Steam loyalists regain the ability to pay for it. This may entice disgruntled players towards piracy. Indeed, it might already have, going by community feedback. Deep Silver, you only have yourself to blame if your game sells poorly. This goes for all the other exclusives and their publishers as well. So what about Epic, you might ask? Are we letting them off the hook? Yes and no. We understand why Epic is being as aggressive as they are. The store is the new kid on the block and they want any edge over the competition they can get. However, their relentless pursuit of exclusives might not be the best way to endear their store to the gaming community. The only effect exclusives have on consumers is limiting their choice to one. When there's only one choice, there is no competition, no incentive to improve. We've watched this play out with Nvidia's RTX series. With no competition, they were able to push their prices sky high, which inevitably led to poor sales and the eventual fall in the price of their stocks. Consumers have everything to lose and nothing to gain from exclusivity. Indeed, this is at the heart of the controversy. All consumers see is Epic removing their choices one game after another. What does Epic offer for consumers to compensate for this? Two games a month? Is that worth the loss of choice? Leave your thoughts in the comments section below. Exclusivity has always been associated with the console wars. Please don't bring this rubbish to the PC platform. If you agree, please share this video to spread the word. There is more content like this in the works, so please like, subscribe and press the bell button so you don't miss out. While you're here, feel free to watch our analysis on Denuvo's history and performance impact, our analysis of Battlefield 5's controversies and our hardware analysis of CPUs and graphics cards. We also have a secondary channel, link is in the description and on the screen. Please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell button.